Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Showcase Minnesota. I'm Rob Hudson. Good morning, everybody. I'm Corbin Seitz. I, I was laughing to myself because, you know, I make little notes to myself on some of my copy before I come in the air, and I'd written something down. I thought, what the heck does that mean? I just wrote it about 15 <laughs> minutes ago. What on earth is that? And uh, then it came it. to me. Yeah, we and then all it came it. to me. Hi, everybody. A beautiful day today. Um, a bittersweet day, of course. Somber. Yeah, uh, September 11th uh, marks the, the anniversary, uh, eight year anniversary of the. The twin tower, the, the bombing in New York and, and uh, in Pennsylvania Washington. and Washington, and uh, certainly a lot of uh, memorial services going on around the country today. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard not to notice. A lot of people driving in today had American flags on their cars and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of homes. And, and yes. if you have a flag, you should put it out and uh, remember all those that lost their lives this yeah. fateful day eight years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Chicago. Where were you? Were you here? In, I was in Minnesota here. Yeah. I was up at my mother's house and uh, I, I saw the whole thing happen live on television. I was yeah, I happened to be I watching. Mm -hmm. I happened to be watching the Today Show when it all went down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I the, the time stood still. I, I could not. I was incredulous as, as most all of us were, I'm sure. And uh, certainly it, it you know, my wife and I were just talking a couple of weeks ago about how how this country you know you have certain things in history that mark certain periods of time and it seems since september 11th eight years ago we just haven't been able to to get back on track and and things, i think we're getting there, you know we, we are it's it's taking a lot longer there. than i thought and i don't know yeah. if you agree or not mm -hmm. but uh, really i mean it was it was a uh, definitely a blow and uh, keep keep those people in your in your thoughts today well and you know this is switching gears we're talking about september um i went to a um movie preview last night, the September issue, mm -hmm. which you may have heard about. It's really a documentary, but it's, uh, if you ever saw the movie, The Devil Wears Prada, mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, Meryl Streep playing supposedly the editor of Vogue, the fashion icon, Anna Winter. Uh, well, this is a documentary about actually following her around seeing how the biggest issue, fashion issue of any magazine ever is made every year. and. It's all behind the scenes, and for somebody like me who's been a fashionista all their life, who grew up in fashion and worked in fashion <laughs> for a million years, it was fascinating, and I'd met a lot of those people in person, so it was really cool to see, oh, sure, yeah. see them you know, on the screen. There were six men in the audience. The rest was a sea of women, <laughs> all with high heels and handbags. Uh, but great place to find a date apparently. but it was interesting yeah it was it was interesting and i'm i loved it i'm not sure it's for everyone but it's gotten great reviews and it was really fun to watch we've so, got yeah, to get we've got to get going starting I, this weekend i think you took all the time i wanted to mention tcf bank stadium opens oh. tomorrow it's a huge <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> outdoor football is back in minnesota uh so yeah that's there great. we go I yeah that's that wonderful <laughs> That's wonderful, Rob. Thanks, Thanks. Corbin. <laughs> now a little something for the romantics out there. Love Happens, starring Jennifer Aniston and Aaron Eckhart, opens in theaters nationwide next Friday, September 18th. In the movie, Eckhart plays a self-help author who heads to Seattle for a sold-out seminar, but when he arrives, he unexpectedly meets the one person who might finally be able to help him help himself. And this morning, to celebrate the film's release, we're giving away a couple of advanced screening passes as well as, get this, this amazing mm. Murad gift set valued at 500 bucks. This prize pack is packed with Murad high performance skincare products and great for those of you wanting to show your skin a little love, L-O-V-E, mm -hmm. love. So stay tuned <laughs> for our, this, <laughs> so stay tuned for our great, that, that doesn't there make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep <laughs> reading, Rob. Stay tuned for our little love happens getaway. <laughs> That's right. That's going to be later on in the show. Hey, in just a moment, the hottest outdoor fall gear from Hoy Guards. But first, a look at what's coming up today on Rachel Ray. All new. We're going to do a super fun 15 minute meal starting now. The clock is ticking, and our audience is firing every question they've got at me. Next, Rach. And Monday. Rachel, my dear. The one and only Oprah welcomes us to her hometown for our huge season four premiere. A block party on the streets of Chicago. A season premiere you're not going to want to miss. Watch Rachel Ray every afternoon at 2 here on Care 11. Now over to Rob for more in the show. All right, thanks a lot, Corbin. First up this morning, gearing up for all your fall adventures. Todd Brewer from Hoyguards is here, and we're talking about a lot of gear because this 
weekend starting today in how many hours? Like just an hour from now? Is it 11 o'clock? One o'clock. One o'clock today One starts the big, yep. the 42nd annual tent yep. sale. Yep. was out there yesterday. And uh, I don't know how many single items I was asking you. It looks like millions. Yeah. I mean, you've got everything all seasons, all four seasons, uh, everything you can imagine to do outside, you've got for sale up to 60% off this weekend. Yeah, the the greater majority of it is fall and winter stuff, mm -hmm. but we also have some bikes and some boats and we have camp stuff, so a so wide variety of things, but uh, but the the greater majority of it is uh, is the is the winter winter product. So. And I'm telling you, he's the president of Hoy Guards, but I've got to tell you, I saw him out there, he pulled up in a giant truck <laughs> you know, from the way he was driving it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, not only that, but he's driving the forklift, loading stuff. Yeah. I mean, boxes of shoes, boots, bindings, poles, everything. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. Enough everybody, of me, everybody enough comes of me out for here. Sales, Tell so. us, these are just some of the items that yeah, you've got Yeah, you know, we've got a wide variety of stuff, lots of stuff for kids. Um, if you're looking for equipment, this is the time to buy. We've got ski packages for kids, mm -hmm. uh, boots, bindings, uh, and skis starting at about $165. So, I mean, oh, wow. there's, there's yeah. some really fantastic deals. But all the equipment that you need. The other thing, too, though, you know, whether you're into outdoor winter sports or not, mm -hmm. particularly if you have kids, but even if you don't, winter in Minnesota, you've got to have warm clothes. Right. So this is a great time to buy. And, you know, the product that's there is a wide variety of stuff. Some of it's carryover, some of it's special stuff that we've bought, but we've got fantastic brands. I mean, you can see we've got North Face, we've got Spider, we've got Burton, we've got Obermeyer. So we've got a wide variety of, of brands and styles. And uh, so that's, that's really fun. Accessories, um, this is the time of year that what parents start to pull. What do you got for accessories there? Um, Look at gloves. these, ones, these are great. Those up. Yeah, <laughs> teeny little hands there. And the neat thing Tolerance. about this, you know, we've talked before about some of this, some of this winter stuff. Mm -hmm. That glove for a, a small child easy opens on. up easy yeah. on, easy off. It's nice and soft, fleecy on the inside. It's got a little nose wipe on the thumb. There you so it's got, it's <laughs> no, got. They all, never you know, do that. They never the do features that. that they're putting into product mm -hmm. these days um, are fantastic. Let's touch on that a little bit. Sure. When you and I, we're not going to date ourselves here, but when you and I were growing up, the clothing was nowhere yeah. near what it is now. Yep. I mean, I wish they would have had this stuff yeah. when I was a kid. You've got, you know, like the polypropylene long underwear. Yes. A good we, we didn't even have that when from, we were kids. We sat yep. there just shivered because we just yep. had the, the, we, the cotton. Now we say cotton kills because mm -hmm. it traps the moisture against your body. So, you know, if you're getting your kids ready for winter, mm -hmm. you got to have boots, you got to have snow pants for them to be at school. Um, and all of that stuff is here, but there's lots of fun stuff too and accessories. Here's a glove by Swanee that actually you can see that it's... Let me hold that up. Um, it's a mitten to keep your fingers warm, uh -huh. but if you need to get at your glasses, at your goggles, uh, it's a glove on the inside. So you just zip it open, your hand comes out. I don't know if you brought the stuff with you. Uh, you know, I'm at that stage with my daughter right now where she grows out of stuff so fast. Yeah. And you've been on before where you can buy, yeah. you know, yeah, you're going to spend a little bit more, but this stuff grows. You can yep. expand the, yeah, the this, inseam and everything with the kids. This outfit from Marker uh -huh. has, has the grow stitch in it. And basically what it is in the sleeve and in the leg of the pants, there's a stitch which will allow it to grow an inch, an inch and a half. And, mm -hmm. and Obermeyer has it, Spider has it, um, the Marker product has it. So that's one of the things with kids that you want to look for is you, is you want that product that hopefully you can get two seasons out of. Hey, one thing uh, I want to mention, in case I forget, is that, uh, yeah, you could save up to 60% off on items at the tent sale. It starts at 1 o'clock today and goes till Sunday at 6. And Sunday, if you can't get there today or tomorrow, you can get an extra 20% off on on and on one single item, yeah. not not your entire purchase, but on one item by texting two five five four three the word tent. Yep. Text the word tent to two five five four three, and you'll yeah. get an extra twenty extra twenty percent off on Sunday. That's amazing. You just bring your phone in and you show it to the cashier, and you get another twenty percent off. Now, well, that's on one item. Does that include if you come in to buy a kayak that day? Exactly. You're kidding me. Nope. Biggest item. Pick the biggest item. You can pick the smallest item if you want. But sure. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you're hoping they pick this <laughs> pair of gloves, but really, so yeah. if you're in the market for a right. bigger purchase, you'll get an extra twenty percent right. off just by texting tent to two five five four three on Sunday. And the selection is huge. But if you're into the brand stuff, you know, if, if you've got stuff you particularly want, if you're looking for mm -hmm. the Spider, the North Face, the Burton, get there early because that stuff will go quick. But the assortment is today huge. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The assortment is huge. We'll have stuff all weekend long. We'll have great oh. values, so there'll be good deals all weekend long. But, I know I mentioned paddle sports. I mentioned a kayak or canoe. You, you'll have those, but also inline skates and bikes. You brought yep. a bike with you today. And, and I know Steve, our floor director, was saying, yeah, Rob, look at the kid. That's not a kid's bike. 
Nope. That's nope, like that's a commuter a, you were calling, right? That's a commuter bike. That's a single speed bike that can flop over to a fixie. There's a wide variety of mountain bikes, mm -hmm. um, high end uh, road bikes, and the bikes are discounted deeply at this point because we need to start making room for winter stuff in the store. So, so this is the year where we shrink the bikes and, and there's some fantastic deals on Folks, bikes. you gotta get out there and see, the tent is huge. What are the dimensions of this thing? I mean, it the, is huge. The tent is, uh, it's 80 by 128. So and it is packed it's, uh, bigger with than the all, store. Of, yeah, it's packed with all the coolest stuff. And uh, like we said, all four seasons, you've got summer stuff, winter stuff, a lot of winter clothes, winter coming up, folks. Uh, we're supposed to have a real cold one this year too. So yep. get in there, get bundled up. Uh, Todd, thank you so much. Thanks, You've got to get to work. You get any sleep. Yeah. This is like the Jerry Lewis <laughs> telethon for you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not round the clock, but three straight days of mayhem out there. Yeah. Uh, good luck to you and come back soon. Thanks. You bet. The Hoy Guards tent sale, it's the 42nd annual. It starts today at one o'clock, runs through Sunday, September 13th till six o'clock Sunday. Is that when you, you go to? Okay. Hoy Guards is located in the Miracle Mile Shopping Center on Excelsior Boulevard in St. Louis Park. For more information call 952-929-1351 or visit hoyguards.com. Much more ahead this Friday morning. Up next, does nine add up to a good time? We're going to find out. Jeff Strick was back with his review of the futuristic new movie and more. Plus, turning tragedy into inspiration, Young and Restless star Tom Beards shares how he found strength in tough times. And later, a taste of Spanish tradition, the Chef's Gallery is back with their tape on paella. Hello, stick around, showcase rolls on. Ready? Almost here. Oh, look what I have here today. Andrew, Welcome back. Funny man me. Robin Williams is back on the big screen this weekend in the dramedy Listen, World's Greatest Dad in, in the movie. Robin plays a teacher who is trying to reconnect with his son. But will audiences connect with Robin's performance? Well, I'll film critic Jeff Strickler is here with his review of that and more. Hi, Jeff. You, you, Welcome you, you, back. You, you didn't give star rings to your uh, fashion movie. To my fashion movie. Um, I would say... Uh, Three stars. No. Okay. See, Rob and I are waiting Zero for Zero for men. Rob, Rob and I are waiting for the Sports <laughs> Illustrated movie, and then we'll go to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about this. Okay, we're going to talk about World's Greatest Dad. Well, World's Greatest Dad is a, is a comic drama. It's, you know, obviously, the title comes from a coffee mug that every dad has. It starts out like it's going to be a spoof of bad parenting, but halfway through, it takes a very, very disturbing turn. Let's take a look. Chance. Why can't we give love? Give love. Give love. Stop. Give Jason, you didn't write that. That's a Queen Bowie song, Under Pressure. What were you thinking? 
I didn't think you knew that one. <laughs> Jason, I'm white. True. Sit down. Oh. Well, Williams to wants you, to be a writer, but has never found any success, so he's making money in teaching. The disturbing moment, halfway through this film, a kid commits, kid kills himself. Very, the tone of the movie changes completely. Williams, being a writer, decides that he's going to for some fake a journal that this kid supposedly wrote before he died. And as the discoverer of the journal, he suddenly becomes, finds all the rich and, uh, you know, suddenly he's on uh, Dr. Phil and he's earning money. So it reminds money. me of the Oprah yeah, incident. He, fi he finds yeah. fame, but to totally the wrong reason. So he's got this guilt, he, it's all a lie, there's a dead kid involved in this thing. So what we want to warn people is, this isn't Mork and Mindy. You know, Robin Williams has made some very lighthearted comedies. He's also made some kicky in the gut movies, mm -hmm. uh, like Insomnia and One Hour Photo. This is a kick you in the gut movie. So we're going to give this thing three stars because it's really, really good. Zero for kids because of the subject matter. Yeah, so don't be fooled by the title. Don't be World's fooled by the title or the fact that Robin Williams is in it. Right, okay. All right, uh, our next movie is the animated futuristic adventure Nine. Nine is is a, is a animated story about that takes place in a post-apocalyptic land where there's run by some killer robots. Don't mistake it for a cartoon. It's animated, but it's not for kids. Let's take a look. Wait, I'm a friend. Oh. Yes, I always hoped. Well, basically, what you got is nine rag dolls take on these robots in a land where humanity has been wiped out, and yeah, that sort of reminds us of the Miu of, of Wall-E. This isn't Wall-E. Wall -E, completely different movie, completely different tone. This is this is very, based on a. It actually was a, was an award-winning short that they expanded into a longer movie. Visually, it's very very stunning. Very the guy who made this is obviously inspired by Tim Burton, who who produced this, so it's very very strong. The plot is sort of robotic, so to speak. Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. So I, again, again, it, it, it's a movie for for people who are into adult animation. So we're going to give this thing two stars, one for the kids. Okay. All right. So we're batting uh, oh for two right? oh, yeah, <laughs> for the kids. Okay. Enough, okay. Enough for the kids. Now we're talking about uh, extract. I don't know about this. Well, film. Extract is a is a comedy starring Jason Bateman, and, and uh, basically he plays this well-meaning but clueless owner of a food extract company who doesn't catch on to the fact that one of his employees is a con artist. Let's take a look. Hello? Hey, Dean. Yo. Thank God you're awake. Uh, did, uh, did, did, did that uh, really happen last night? We go through with that? That, uh, that uh, gigolo stuff? Uh, as far as I know. Damn it. What? What was I thinking? We gotta call that off. Right now, can you call that guy? The, what's his name? Uh, Brad, okay, yeah, man. Call him. Yeah, tell him I'll pay him anyway. Not to not to worry about it. Just tell him not to go over there. What what was I thinking? Well, of course, that, 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 the bearded guy was Ben Affleck, who just seems to be having a ball with this role. He's um, funny. He's, he's, he's actually a, he's a, he's a drug dealer, but he's having, he's having a good time with it. Basically, what happened here is, is poor Jason Bateman takes a liking to a, an employee named, played by Mila Kunis, who is out to get him. She wants to get him into bed, but in the process, she also wants to get his hands on, on her hands on his money. So this is, you know, the movie was, was written and directed by Mike Judd, the guy who gave us uh, Office Space. This is sort of a distant second cousin of that same sort of you know how how inept corporate well, world can be. Um, great, the uh, in, in, watch for an appearance by oh, Kiss. Uh, there's a guy named Gene Simmons who's a oh, sure. sing, uh, on Kiss. <laughs> he plays a sleazy lawyer, and, and so I think this is a movie where people can have some fun with the faces. Again, it's for adults. We're gonna give it two and a half stars, just one for the kids. Okay, Gene Simmons in a suit as an attorney. Yeah, that's that's kind of different. Yeah. All right, uh, you've got a DVD pick for us. We do, and you know, it's it's no co coincidence that none of these movies are aimed at kids. The thinking in Hollywood is that with school back in session, they're gonna let the kids focus on that for a while. But what if you've got youngsters who are looking for something to watch? Well, trust the folks at Disney to come through. The movie is called Earth. Mm. It's the first offering from a new venture called Disney Nature. Okay, it's a documentary about wildlife, but don't tell the kids and they won't realize that it's educational. 
they will realize that it features some stunning photography. They'll see humpback whales and polar bears and, and baby ducks for Pete's sakes, baby ducks. The film avoids the gore of the standard wildlife documentaries to focus on animal families, and that makes it perfect viewing for human families. Mm, what stunning photography. Indeed. Yeah, Disney does it again. They, they do. do it right every time. Okay, Jeff, thank you for uh, coming by. Coming up, the truth about diabetes and how it can be controlled with the right care. Plus, the Chef's Gallery shows us how to make traditional paella. And later, your chance to call in and win this amazing Murad skincare basket valued at $500 plus free screening passes to see love happens. That giveaway is next, so stick around. Welcome back. It's a Spanish-style dish that's not only packed with flavor, but paella is a perfect fall feast for your next gathering. That's right. And here to show us how it's made is Suzanne Schilling from the Chef's Gallery. Hello, Suzanne. Welcome back. Great Thank to you. have you Love again. Thank you. Love to be here. Hey, before we get to cooking the paella, congratulations are in order because I understand Chef's Gallery is celebrating your 10th anniversary, 10th anniversary with a bunch of great events. Mm -hmm. Tell us about them. Well, tomorrow we're going to be cooking paella on our patio, mm -hmm. and we have a 48-inch paella pan. What that, time is it starting? At uh, 12 o'clock, and okay. it will go till 4. Okay. So lots of paella. Sunday we've got an Iron Chef competition between two local chefs starting at 1 o'clock. Excellent. That'll be fun. Excellent. And lots of drawings and prizes and things going on until the 20th. Okay, where are you guys located out there? And this is open to the public, so come on out yep, and have fun. Yep, we're on Main Street in Stillwater, mm -hmm. actually at the first stoplight as you come into downtown. Okay, and this isn't just tomorrow and Sunday this weekend. This is a 10-day celebration ten days, yeah. for the 10 years. Uh, you've also got gift bags that people yes, we can do. get? Okay. Yep. How do they get, get their hands on one of well, those? Well, um, the first 75 people that come through the door starting on the 14th mm -hmm. through the 20th will get a gift bag with free gadgets in it. And you can register to win prizes too, right? Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. Nice. Cook Let's get stuff. to cooking okay. paella. You're going to be giving demonstrations tomorrow, but we're going to jump the gun and do it today. First thing is the rice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I noticed a bag right over there yep. of paella yep. rice, and you got a bowl of it. Kind of describe the rice and why it's special. Well, the rice is a short grain Here's the round. bag. I'm going to turn, I'm gonna okay, turn the turn bag, the bag so people can yep. see. Yeah, it actually comes. Whoa, there goes the pan. Paella rice. Yep. There it's it is. a short grain, very mm -hmm. round rice that is on the starchy side. Mm -hmm. It's it's 
reminiscent of an arboreal rice used for risotto. Okay. Um, so you can substitute back and forth, but this one is grown in Spain, and that's what they use traditionally. So. Okay. Let's get to cooking so we don't okay. run out of time here. And where do you start? Well, we're, we're doing an easy and quick paella. Okay. Um, rather than the real lengthy one, we're going to do tomorrow. I've got my vegetables already sautéed. Mm -hmm. and Regist uh, we'll, we'll have the uh, recipe online. Online, so. yep. And all we're going to do is quickly add our rice, get some oil on the rice. Okay. It looks like, okay, back up the, uh, the veggies, onions and... Onions, uh, tomatoes, tom garlic, and the uh, some um, saffron okay. is already in there. So you can see the yellow already and starting And you're doing this in a cast iron skillet. You're not using said paella pan yet. Not yet. Okay. The one that, the one that is finished, we have in our actual paella pan. Okay. Then all you're going to do is add your stock to it. Mm -hmm. um, you can use chicken stock. You can use uh, fish stock. And that's then going to cook for 20 minutes. That's it. Okay. Now... Um, we're going to get rid of that. After 20 minutes, this is what it looks like. Oh, what gives it the color? Uh, the saffron. Okay. The saffron, which is a, a, a very interesting spice, but um, I'm going to start putting this in while I'll, I'll tell you a little bit I was reading about the it. recipe uh, during breakfast today, preparing. Yes, folks, I do prepare for these segments. And I noticed that you save the chorizo meat you're putting in there and the shrimp till right before you serve right. it. And this is, this is the traditional Spanish chorizo. Where it is you find not that? the Mexican. Well, we found it at um, Coastal Seafood, okay. actually. Okay. It's, it's not that easy to come by. You can buy a smoked a chorizo, which is not exactly the same, but it it's, um, will substitute. Still, and now you're putting in some peas and it looks yep. like some uh, peppers. You yep. still haven't put it in the paella pan yet. Nope. And is that the third step? or No, actually, you'd cook the whole thing in the paella pan. Oh, okay. But because I've got three stages Even the rice? to it. Yes. Oh, okay. Everything is okay. cooked. So this this is actually considered a paella pan. Look at pan, the color, folks. Different... That's beautiful. Don't put the color oh, on okay, that. Look well, how beautiful that is. Well, I'm going to show you what when it looks like when it's done. Okay. All right. This well, is... we got time. Hold on. Before you, before, okay. I'm going to step over here. Pardon my boarding house manner. Let's talk pans. Okay. And I'm going to bring it over here, and you kind of walk us through why the significance of a paella pan. And I know they come. You can buy them. They're just huge. Is we're that for the big party outside? 48 inches. Yeah. Is yeah four feet paella pan. Most people will buy a smaller pan for for in house. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, it's a flat bottom pan that has some dimpling in it. Yeah, you a can see the dimpling. Slanted size. And generally, you're not cooking in these pans with a cover on them. Mm -hmm. I did today because we were you doing a quick version, which doesn't have as much liquid in it. And what will happen while you're cooking in this pan is it'll get kind of crusty around the edges uh -huh. um, as it starts to cook down. And um, you can put the lid on for the last couple minutes of it. Those big 48-inch 40, 40 pans, do they come with lids too? No. Yeah, None of the say. paella pans come with lids okay. at all. Okay, all but right, But you can, you can throw another lid on if you want to at the very end if you're using the traditional pan. If you're going to use a giant 48-inch pan, what do you use for a heat source? Would that be a special, have, like a propane? Well, actually, we're bringing in a big charcoal grill oh, to wow. go under it. So you could do that at home. You, you could just put hot coals underneath your Weber or whatever yep. and put that pan on there and yep. cook away. Yep. Uh, I imagine it's got to get pretty hot. Yep. Here, now it comes, it's got to be a coastal Spanish dish, right? Because it's always yes. got some sort of seafood in it. It does. And the, and the one that we had over there that we showed on the lead in is from Valencia, Spain. And that is a coastal city. And that's where Polenta, uh, excuse me, not Polenta, Paella, Paella is really revered. Mm -hmm. In that city, so they they go about with the a governor, lemon. aren't you? <laughs> no, polenta. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, there <laughs> um, it is. But anyway, that that oh, you've got uh, chicken, a big drum. We've in got there chicken too. in there. We've got shrimp. We've got mussels. We've got um, clams, and some of the recipes will call for squid, or they'll call for. Mm -hmm. I've had it with squid. Uh, scallops. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's a million versions. It's kind of their Midwest hot dish. I didn't see any garlic go into it. There is garlic. It's there in is. Our, it's okay. in our beginning I was going to say we're going to break part. our streak. That was nope, that would be the nope. first time we've ever done a dish on the show on, without garlic. Onion, garlic, <laughs> and tomatoes is where we start with saffron. Suzanne, uh, you're the best. Congratulations Thank you on, very much. on 10 years. Good. And uh, keep on cooking. I will. You bet. I will. For a copy of today's paella recipe, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address on your screen. And let me find my place here. Or log on to showcaseminnesota.com and click on recipes. You're going to find today's recipe under the main dish category. For more great recipe ideas or information on their 10th anniversary celebration, stop by the Chef's Gallery in Stillwater. For more info about their cooking classes, visit thechefsgallery.com. Coming up, finding healing in the face of tragedy. We'll go inside a touching memoir from young and the restless star, Tom Beards. That's next. Plus, it's curtain call for some of our best local theater groups. We're going to preview the Ivy Awards, so please stay tuned.
<laughs> okay. Welcome back. Our next guest is an artist in every sense of the word, a daytime soap opera actor. Tom Beards is also a very talented artist and author. His first book, Forgiving Troy, is a touching memoir about overcoming tragedy and hardship in his own family. And we are delighted to have Tom with us this morning. Hi, Tom. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. Uh, we're going to show some of your art in just a minute because uh, and, and tell you how you can meet him this weekend at a showing. But let's back up a little bit. We're going to go back in time a little bit. Right. We're going to go back to uh, 1989. You're a Wisconsin boy living in Hollywood. You're 27 years old. You've landed a job on the number one soap opera at that time, The Young and the Restless. People were touting you as the Tom Cruise lookalike, which you are. Uh, thank you. And um, you, were you were at home with your boyfriend and the phone rang. What happened? My sister called and said that my brother had just murdered our mother, that he had killed her in her kitchen, and that he was on his way out probably to kill me. So that just took us all by surprise. My brother was problematic. Mom didn't tell us how problematic because she didn't want to worry me in Hollywood. And later I would discover how many times she had tried to get him to different counselors and different doctors and they didn't know what to do with him. Ultimately, somebody needed to come in and they needed to house him in, in, a, in, a, in an institution that would be able to deal with him. Mm -hmm. Most doctors didn't think he was schizophrenic when he killed her. We didn't think he was schizophrenic when he killed her. We thought he was just uh, a bad kid that would not listen to reason or, or, or mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And your mother had been calling you. She'd called you a few days uh, before she left you some messages, hadn't she? And she said, I, w I really want you to know I love you. I'd like to talk to you. I want to talk to you. You, you have a lot of moments in your life like that, I think, in reading this book. You, this sent you, obviously, into a tailspin. Uh, it would anybody. And your whole life changed, your family changed. Um, how did all of this affect you directly? Yeah, my priorities changed. At that point, it wasn't about me being rich and famous and getting the Hollywood dream. It was about how do I reach my mom now, because I always believed in life after death. And I, I'm an introvert anyway, so I stayed inside a lot. Mm -hmm. I uh, started to paint. That uh, was my way to just get out of my head a lot of my Because feelings. you were, you were, you had so many conflicting feelings from what I read that the art became your therapy. It, and we should show some of these now uh, because these are prints, right, Tom? Yeah, these are prints. Of some of the, the original, original pieces. Are bigger. 
And after I did this one, I realized that this was me reaching out to my brother. That's what I was thinking. I was going to ask uh, you if that was the topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought of that when I saw it. And uh, yeah, five yeah. years after Troy killed Mom, I did wind up going back to his prison. And that's when we reunited. And that's why I decided to start writing the book. Well, and, and we do have to say that that was the outcome of this. He was sent to prison. Mm -hmm. uh, he's there now. When was the last time you saw him? I saw him a couple months ago. He's been there for 20 years. He'll be there for 30 more years. But it's the best place for him. It's the place that mom wanted him to be. He's in the psychiatric unit of the prison system, so there's not gangs. He's always had his own cell for 20 years. He's on medication. He's I mean, he's gotten medication. help. His, his personality's different, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And what's interesting is 70% of boys that kill their mother never get to a point of remorse. Troy mm. did, and I didn't push that on him. That's mm -hmm. something that he eventually came to, and I'm very proud of him for that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and... You've got to be feeling, I mean, you forgave him. This book is called Forgiving Troy. How were you able to get to that spot? It took a long time to get to that spot. You said in the book that you have to forgive him over and over again. Yeah, yeah that's it. I mean, I, you know, I miss my mom. Uh, I think about what he did. But what use is it to condemn him or to have any other feelings for him besides love right now? Yeah. What use will that do for him or for me? Well, and we have to say uh, that you are on The Young and the Restless again. He's back there. You can see him on the air uh, every day. There you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, reprising the role that you had before. We can't go into how he got back there because his character was killed off, but he's come back to life. Uh, but it's an interesting storyline, and I'm going to tell everybody how they can meet you and see more of your artwork. Great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. It's a riveting story. Thank you can meet Tom at his art show at Gene Stephen Gallery in Minneapolis this Sunday from 4 to 7 p.m. To find out more about Tom, go online to showcaseminnesota.com and just click on the Friday link. And Tom Beard's memoir, Forgiving Troy, is available at Amazon.com. Still ahead, celebrating the Twin Cities theater scene, what to expect at this year's Ivy Awards is coming up next. also mention
Welcome back to the Twin Cities. I have some of the best live theater in the country. We're very proud of it. And this morning we're taking a closer look at what makes it so great with the fifth annual Ivy Awards. And here to tell us more about it is its founder and manager, Scott Mayer and the Guthrie, Sheila Livingston. Welcome to both of you. Good morning. Thank you. Scott, I'm going to talk to you first because um, we all talk about our theater. We all love our theater. But the Ivy Awards really celebrates it. Is that why you founded it five years ago? That's right. Uh, you said it uh, as the in your introduction that we do have one of the best, if not the best, theater communities in the country. And we really need to celebrate that fact. Mm -hmm. uh, until the Ivy Awards was formed, people uh, love theater, yes. But there was really not one night where the theater industry, as well as people that go to theater or people that want to go to theater, can get together and say, hey, we've got a great city. Mm -hmm. That's one of the perks of this job is that I I get to go to so many plays and take my family and teach my daughter about art from the ground up. It's wonderful. And some of those are at the Guthrie. And Sheila, um, uh, in 2007, you were awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award yes. uh, by uh, the Ivy for your work. You are at the Guthrie. What does it mean to you personally and professionally to win one of these? It meant so much. It's really hard to express it. Because as uh, you may know, I have worked behind the stage for many years in education and community relationships. And so for somebody like myself, representing hundreds of other people who work in those kinds of capacities, I was actually stunned that night that an, I'm not an artist, I'm a real theater goer and I want everyone to go to the mm -hmm. theater. And of course, I do love the Guthrie, and I love encouraging people and welcoming them to the theater. And the interesting thing about it all was, when I won this award, I was so amazed by the numbers of people doing work like myself who said what it meant to them that yeah. they felt they were being recognized for their work as right. well. It's more behind the scenes, if you will. Uh, your name's not on the playbill as the producer or the star. That's right. But you're still there making it uh, happen every day. And to be recognized for that yeah. was incredible. Yeah. Uh, now, you've got the big Ivy Awards coming up that anyone can attend. Any of you out there can get tickets. What's the show going to be like? Yeah, it's perfect for people that love theater because they get to see all their favorite actors and actresses. But mm -hmm. it's perfect for people that don't get to see theater because they get a nice snapshot because it's a big party. It's more of a party than it you is You theater people know show. how to party. Exactly. <laughs> and so we've got and make it look good. lots of live entertainment, <laughs> lots of, re we got a huge red carpet this year with autograph seekers, and it's going to be just one big party. It's at the State Theater, yeah. and we've got a big post party afterwards, too, so people can schmooze and look at eye candy and all, all oh, of that. Oh, super, super fun. Um, now, What's on tap for the future of the theater in the Twin Cities? How do you feel it's been going? Because in this economy, that's not always the first thing you're going to spend money on is to take it to the theater. How are we faring? Well, I, uh, Sheila can probably answer this better than I, but we started with 45 professional theaters five years ago when we founded the Ivy Awards, and now we're at 69. Oh, okay. And so, so we've seen a 50% jump, and it's, interestingly enough, Theaters are popping up in neighborhoods that never have a live, had a live entertainment option um, prior to the theater mm -hmm. moving in. Mm -hmm. And so theater has been a real driving force for improving neighborhoods. And that's yeah. what we're seeing happening in the Twin Cities. And the response has been overwhelming. So it's maybe morphing into some new forms that we hadn't seen in the past, but still alive and doing fabulously well. Well, thank you for your service so that all of us can continue to enjoy theater and to you too as well. Well, Scott, it's a pleasure to see you both. Thank you so much. The Ivy Awards are Monday, September the 21st. It's first at 7.30 p.m. at the Historic State Theater in Minneapolis. For tickets or more information, you can visit ivyawards.com. And it's time now for First Birthdays. First Birthdays is brought to you by Minnesota College Savings Plan and ECFE. And a very happy first birthday to Aaliyah Jane Cost. Aaliyah loves dancing with her brother, playing in the garbage can, and crawling onto things she's not supposed to. <laughs> happy birthday, Aaliyah, and to everyone celebrating a birthday today. And if you would like to have your child's picture featured on first birthdays, please send a non-returnable photo to first birthdays, 8811 Olson Memorial Highway, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 554 
1027. You can also email us at firstbirthdays at showcaseminnesota.com. We need to receive the pictures at least two weeks in advance of the child's birthday. And now switching gears to a special treat for one lucky viewer. If you're the 20th caller to the numbers on your screen, you'll win this amazing Murad High Performance Skin Care Gift Basket valued at 500 bucks. It also includes two free passes to see an advanced screening of the new Jennifer Aniston romantic dramedy, Love Happens. To win, just call 651-989-5273 or toll free 888-546-8811. Please note that if you've won anything from Showcase Minnesota in the past 30 days, if you're not eligible to win it this time, dial carefully and good luck. Still ahead, preventing diabetes. More on the warning signs, risk, and what you can do for your health when we return. Oh, I got it. If Welcome back to the show. It's a growing problem in the U.S. The National Institute of Health says that diabetes affects about 24 million people in our country. And of those, only 18 million folks have been diagnosed. Our next guest says there are warning signs, and with the right care, diabetes can be controlled. Here to tell us more is Dr. Yasmin Arandi from Apple Valley Medical Center. Good morning, doctor. Great Good to morning. have you here. Thanks for uh, having me. How big of a problem is diabetes? Well, diabetes is really a national epidemic. Uh, as you said, there's 24 million Americans that currently have diabetes, mm -hmm. and if the current trend continues, estimate they estimate that uh, one in three children born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes. Oh, wow. What are the causes? Because it can come on later in life as well, too, Yes, right? yes. Well, there's two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, and 90 to 95 percent of adults have type 2 diabetes, which is generally adult onset mm -hmm. uh, diabetes. And that's generally from a lack of production of insulin or insulin resistance. And obesity is a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes. And obviously, if, obes if obesity is a major <laughs> contributor, it can be controlled. Oh, yes, absolutely. Diabetes okay. can be controlled. And there are uh, many good medications for diabetes. There's also uh, once-a-day long-acting insulins, which are much easier to use. And... Uh, I also brought a glucose Let me meter hold that to show out. you. I'll, I'll hold that at the camera and uh, yeah. I'll hold it right over here and you just tell me what we're holding here. Well, you're holding the glucometer, which is a way to measure your blood glucose. And uh, I wanted to show how easy Th it was. This one's 
the glucometer, glucometer and it's, okay. it's really small and compact. Mm -hmm. And this is the lancets and the testing strips. So very yeah. portable and easy to take with How you. How about daily treatments too? They've come a long way there. Absolutely. There's also implantable pumps, which a lot of young people are using to control the diabetes. Now at the Apple Valley Medical Center or the mm -hmm. medical clinic, you've got an event coming up. We do. Tell us about that. Well, we're very excited. We're hosting a free event open to the community for anybody interested in learning about diabetes mm -hmm. or uh, uh, anybody that may uh, just want to come and learn more about uh, and check out the clinic too. Yep. Uh, you guys were just uh, voted the number one family practice clinic uh, in, in diabetes care by Minnesota Community Measurement. What exactly? Yes. How big of an honor is that? Well, that's a, that's a, actually a great honor, mm -hmm. and uh, we're very proud to be number one in diabetic care uh, in Minnesota. Basically, we uh, we worked really hard to um, take take care of the entire patient, which involves pre-visit and post-visit planning and making sure that we do everything at their visit to, to, uh, that we can to optimize their health. Why is diabetes such a serious problem? I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but uh, why is it so serious? Well, diabetics uh, have a lot of complications from their diabetes, which include uh, cardiovascular disease and stroke. Mm -hmm. They can uh, develop blindness, uh, suffer from amputations from their limbs, peripheral vascular disease, and basically they are more susceptible to a lot of common illnesses such as the flu. So diabetics should be getting oh, wow. their flu shots now. Well, I suppose and, uh, there's more concern too with the H1N1 coming up as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you screen for it? How you know? Are, are there symptoms that that maybe you feel a little differently that maybe you should come in and be screened for diabetes? And and how do you know if it is diabetes? Well, we screen uh, a lot of our patients that are physicals, and we look at fasting blood sugars. Mm -hmm. And if you have a blood sugar over 100, between 100 and 125, you're what we call a pre-diabetic. And if you have two measurements over 125, you truly have diabetes. Okay. And you might have other symptoms like increased thirst, uh, increased urination, or weight loss. Now I'm starting to feel thirsty. And I'm thinking <laughs> about now if you tested me, I shouldn't have had that donut. But <laughs> no, I'm being somewhat serious. If you are going to have uh, have a test done, mm -hmm. do you have to watch your sugar intake for a couple days leading up to so you get an accurate reading? Or does no, it... you really don't. Really? Just a 12-hour fasting glucose is adequate. Okay. And and what does the test entail? How do you how do you do it? Well, it's just a blood test. Really? It is. And there's also another test called an A1C, which we can check, which gives us a three-month measurement of your sugar. Okay. I come and see uh, Dr. Orandi, and you tell me, Rob, well, uh, you've got the uh, beginning symptoms of diabetes. How does my life change? Well, you've got to eat healthy, and if you've got extra weight to lose, then I'm going to get on you for that. Okay, and so. how much extra weight are we talking? Okay, 10, 15 pounds, or are we talking grossly obese people? Well, if you have extra weight, really, I encourage you to try and lose like 5% of your body weight just okay. to start with. Just otherwise, it seems insurmountable to people to try and lose 50 pounds. It's, but it most seems, people can do 5 or 10. Absolutely. Uh, are we talking treatable or curable? Treatable. It is treatable. Treatable, although many people can be diet controlled if they really get their weight down and exercise regularly. And your lifestyle necessarily doesn't have to change not with, necessarily. With, with today's treatments. No, Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, a lot of great information. Thanks for and having I'm me. I'm going to read some more info about your, uh, your uh, okay. event coming up here. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Thank Apple you. Valley Medical Center is hosting a free diabetes education evening on Tuesday, September 29th at its location on Galaxy Avenue. The event starts at 6 p.m. For more information, information and to register call 952-432-6161 or visit applevalleymedicalcenter.com we're going to wrap things up right after this
And we'd like to thank all of our guests for appearing on today's show. Hoy Guards and Apple Valley Medical Clinic paid for today's segments. If you'd like to have your business appear on the show, check out showcaseminnesota.com to find out more. Corbin. Well, I, we were looking at our little <laughs> gift bag here. First, we have to say, Joyce, congratulations on winning the $500 Murad basket. She was screaming mm -hmm. on the phone to our producer. Um, and uh, so there it is. everybody Congrats. who called in. Here's Call Joyce. in another time. It does happen. Joyce won. And then look at all this cool stuff from Chef's Gallery. They always, I said they are single-handedly outfitting my kitchen and bringing it into the 21st century. This is a cool deal that you pick up hot things with it. It's, look at that. It's it's for, yeah. Hot lip. I got the red Sarait, hot lips. Sarait. And then look at this. This is a whisk. <laughs> and it's called Different Strokes for Different Yolks. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everyone. Go Gophers. Go Vikings. Different things. So Go many Vikings. things. Hot pad. Oh, my God. Emotional gosh. consideration on Showcase Minnesota provided by the following. Home Furniture. Rocco Altabelli. North Star Media Services. Hoy Guards. Granite Transformations. Kitchen Window. Music Connection. Minneapolis School of Flower Design. And Gen Air Appliances from the Maytag Store.